I can't believe the level of stupidity in this man's brain. Russo'sBrand.com, where the pros are the pros. Castrating the marks. What's next? This tweet that was sent in by Mr. Macedonia of Greece one. I don't know if you guys saw this. Uh, I don't have a screenshot because it was deleted. It was kind of disgusting anyway. But Linda Hogan, Hulk's ex-wife, put out a pretty racist tweet this past week having to deal with the, the protests and things. Tony Khan replies to this tweet. You've now joined your husband in being banned from all AEW shows. Congratulations. This is my problem with this. Let, let's forget the fact that this would be the same thing as him tweeting this to my mom. Him banning my mom from AEW is the same thing as him with Linda Hogan. We want to go wrestle for AEW. Like, like, stupid makes no sense. He's using this awful racist tweet to promote his company. That's true. But on top of that, Jeff, that, that's like secondary. That's secondary. Bro, he's using this tweet to get over with their fan base. And if he's not, bro, why would you respond to this? Did did you respond to it, Jeff? No. I mean, bro, like Tony Khan, like, do you think we're stupid? Like, do you think people with a brain don't see that? Why, Why would you reply to a Linda Hogan statement that has nothing to do with you if you weren't trying to get over with your AEW marks? Why would you comment on that? It's clearly marketing emphasis on Mark. But again, Jeff, any anybody with any sense can see right through that shit. Anybody. So Wrestling Inc. had put out a um, tweet with a link to their article where they were quoting Meltzer, where Meltzer was reporting that people in WWE were talking about Tony Khan and all the money he was spending, and that the general feeling inside WWE is we beat Ted Turner, and he was a lot smarter than Tony Khan. Okay? This is a rumor put out by Meltzer. Tweeted by Wrestling You Repeat that one more time. Go ahead. Yeah, it was basically that people inside WWE, right. their thought process about AEW and Tony Khan is Ted Turner did the same thing with the money. You know, they could, he could buy whoever he want, and Tony and, and Turner was smarter than Khan, and we beat Turner. That That's what Meltzer is reporting anyway. Right. Okay? Right. So Wrestling Inc. did an article on this and tweeted it. So Khan responds to the Wrestling Inc. tweet. And he says, I've never met Ted Turner. It's very possible Ted Turner is smarter than me, but he didn't know 1% of what I know about professional wrestling or WCW would still be on TNT and TBS. AEW is here to stay. Watch Rampage Live tonight on TNT. What does Ted Turner have to do with AOL Time Warner not wanting to be on television? And what 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 does that have to do with Ted Turner's knowledge of professional wrestling? Let's look at what he considers. What is his when he's saying he has one percent of the knowledge I have? Is this the same as what we always talk about as the historical? I know things that happen. Knowledge. I know who. Oh no, no, this, this, state, this, you know. this 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 is this is this. Ted Turner never wrote it. A, a wrestling show. Ted Turner never booked a card, bro. Ted, let's face it. Ted Turner sitting at the gorilla position would be pretty damn funny. Ted Turner never went out on the stage and stomped his foot like an absolute lunatic. And, and he never won Booker of the Year. Yes, Ted Turner never won Book of the Year. Ted Turner did not have a pipeline to Dave Meltzer. This is what we're talking about. Bro. A couple of days ago, we had two AEW fans. Having a simple conversation on Twitter. This was a simple conversation between Bella Randolph and Dynamite Download. Two AEW fans. Bella Randolph says they have to qualify, but Sky, who hasn't wrestled on Dynamite for months, doesn't? Please explain. Dynamite Download says... There's really no explanation that can be given that makes any sense. So Dynamite Download, who is a fan of Dynamite, basically is saying can't give an explanation because none of it makes any sense. So just shrug it off and enjoy the show. The match will be bonkers. 
Dynamite Di- Download Den says, I think basically all of us are on the same page. This match will be amazing, but the inconsistency with how the other entrants were named is curious, no doubt. So you've got AEW fans questioning the booking, the logic of Booker Man, little big man, Tony Khan. Well, you know, bro, that's okay. Conversation between two wrestling fans questioning the booking. Obviously, it happened to me for 20 years. It still happens to me, and I'm not even booking anymore. But that's okay, bro. But, bro, here's the scary part. Tony Khan, president of Jacksonville Jaguars, Premier Soccer League, AEW, owner of the world, it seems Tony Khan is somehow, someway following this personal conversation between Dynamite Download and Bella Randolph. And I hate to see how many followers Bella Randolph and Dynamite Download have, but Tony Khan is following this conversation. Now, if you remember on the last show, Tony Khan did a show called Wrestling Fetish to defend his booking against the words of Conan. Now, Conan is Conan. Conan is a legend in the business. But now Tony Khan is going to defend his comments to Bella Randolph and Dynamite Download. Bro, isn't there a... NFL draft or something? Isn't there a camp? Isn't there something going on? But not only is Tony following this, he chimes in. Tony chimes in. Here's what he said. I pay great weekly guarantees already and want to do a dope PPV ladder match without offering a big PPV win bonus. Okay, let's break that down. I pay great weekly guarantees already. So Tony's saying he pays great weekly guarantees to the wrestlers. But he wants to do a dope ladder match. A dope ladder match, bro. Bro, who still uses the word dope? I don't know. But he wants to do a dope ladder match without offering a big pay-per-view win bonus? Are you saying that your talent gets paid a bonus if they win pay-per-view scripted matches? So either one or two things happen. Now, I'm assuming this is a work, but because, you know, Mr. Khan is Mr. Khan, we don't know. So is Mr. Khan trying to work Dynamite Download and uh, Bella Randolph, or does Mr. Khan really pay bonuses to the winner of pay-per-view matches that are scripted? I, Bro, I would not doubt that. I would not doubt that at all. The winner's purse, bro. Mr. Khan goes on to say Cody, Sky, and Pentagon were the first three stars to sign a contract which is admittedly favorable to me and AEW. So Cody, Sky, and Pentagon were the first three stars to sign a contract which was favorable to him and AEW. So because Sky signed a favorable contract, he is allowed in this match without qualifying when everybody else has to qualify. Tony goes on to say, now it's a huge match. Everyone wants in, so they need to qualify, bro. They need to qualify. This is a huge, dope match. Tony, what are we doing? Tony, is there not a draft going on? Is there not a compound somewhere, Tony, going on? 
Tony, what are you doing that you are getting involved in a conversation with Bella Randolph and Dynamite Download? Sitting on his computer, watching conversations by random marks, and then chiming in to defend his booking. Tony, the Jaguars were one in 15, bro. What in God's name are you doing? Before Dynamite, for those of you that didn't see it, he had tweeted, tonight we have a great lineup for Dynamite. And he ended the tweet with, the balance of power in wrestling will shift tonight. Now, nothing earth shattering happened on that show. So PW Insider reached out to Khan for a explanation on this. And of course, Khan replied to them as why wouldn't he? So this was his explanation on the tweet. There's more to come. Pac coming back is the beginning of a huge push for the rest of the year. Balance of power in the storyline refers to Eddie Kingston's strong power base as a character which could be threatened. But it also refers to the big push AEW is making for the rest of the year and through December into 2021. Yeah, well, he's right. They just signed Matt Seidel. They, today, they just signed Matt Seidel. Yes, so he's right. That was huge news going into the new year. Bro, Matt Seidel, Pac. Are you kidding me? I, I'm expecting that 750,000 fan base to double. How can that one statement mean, well, it's a storyline reference to Eddie Kingston, and it bro, also means we're making a big push into next year. Bro, Tony Khan has done everything right. That's true. That's true. Stop. Who am I to judge? He's done everything right, including that statement. What's next? Well, let's go to a Tony Khan tweet. This was sent in by Nathan Vaughn. This started off with some guy. He tweets, you have to hand it to Tony Khan. That whole team were his signings. He's talking about Fulham. Maybe we now have a manager to take advantage of this squad. So a fan, just a random fan replies to this guy. Richard, you're clearly mates with TK. But the club has been awfully run under his custodianship while he runs other businesses. Him taking a step back has done us a world of good. So guess who replies to this? God, bro. That God. He is boys with me. I like Richard a lot. Richard is the man. I actually haven't taken a step back, though. So that's not what's done us a world of good. God, bro. Can you imagine Gabe, Gabe Kapler? <laughs> in one of my tweets. Can you imagine, bro? Can you imagine? This was sent in by Jared Cantatori and Greg O'Grady. So Tony Khan had put out a tweet promoting an upcoming Dynamite episode. So a random fan replies to this and says, don't hype up another show and not deliver like you did with Revolution. Just book a great show and not get our hopes up for something to just not deliver again. So who do you think replied to this? No, Tony, Khan. Tony Khan. Now the guy made a typo. Not get our hopes up, and he spelled R-A-R-E instead of O-U-R. I, and I do that all the time. Tony Khan responds, O-U-R, hopes. No. Corrected his grammar. Because he can't handle the criticism, bro. That's why. He can't handle the criticism. I, what does this – how does – Mitch, make the, the – Jags video with this guy. How does he have time to correct a random fan's grammar in a tweet at all with all this crap that he does? It, it's unbelievable. Again, I, I'll go. I'll use your thing. Imagine Vince McMahon do. Imagine Vince McMahon sitting on Twitter reading a tweet criticizing him and correcting the fans' grammar like a ha ha oh got my you. God. Can you imagine that, bro? Can you imagine that, bro? This was a Tony Khan tweet sent in by Charles Latour, and of course, we all know the whole Matt Hardy situation by now. But this was tweeted the day after. Are we getting crickets? You said Tony Khan, the crickets just oh, came out. Yeah, okay. you said Tony Khan and crickets just came out. Okay, okay, so this is after his scrum? The day after. The day after a scrum, okay. An update on Matt Hardy. It's great news. Matt's okay. We sent him to the hospital as a precaution, and he's passed the MRI and CT scans. He doesn't have a concussion. Okay, so this was 
This is Sunday. It's definitely uh, Sunday. Okay. On Sunday, he's saying he everything's yeah. good. He doesn't have a concussion, and Matt's going out there and saying, "I'm going to be back when I get cleared." Bro, you you either have a concussion or you don't. Listen, I, I, I I'm sorry, bro. I'm going to believe the guy's wife. Okay, I'm going to believe. I could, was Tony Khan at the hospital with him? Was Tony Khan sitting there with him? Did Tony Khan go to bed with him at night? Did Tony was Tony Khan there when he got home? I'm I'm going to tend to believe what his wife said. So, you know, again, bro, Tony, what what is he waiting to get cleared from then? A cold? Does he have a cold? Does he got a toe fungus? What what is he waiting to be cleared from if he's not talking about a concussion? Why is this guy even putting this tweet out to begin with? Why does he have to update everybody? Matt Hardy does not have a concussion. Because, bro, these guys, and you know what, bro? Triple H is the same in his way. These guys just have this freaking necessity to be be loved by the Marks, bro. They want to come across as, you know, they're friends with the Marks and we're listening to you and we're doing this to you. Bro, it's like, you know, at Triple H, he gets his picture taken with every 15-year-old at NXT. It's, it's the same freaking thing. It's freaking embarrassing, man. But like these guys, they, they, they're marks for the boys. They're, they're marks for the marks. I ju- I, 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 and that's why business sucks, because it's not conducted like a business, bro. It's conducted like a big mark convention. AEW might as well be just a big on-the-road traveling mark convention. That's what it might as well be, bro. And it's led the ringleader is the head mark. Of course, we've seen Tony Khan's ridiculousness inside the wrestling business, but we've always wondered what goes on with this guy with his other stuff because he works for the Jacksonville Jaguars in the Fulham soccer team. I guess after Fulham's loss, he had made some tweets. And in this clip from Sky Sports, it's a former Liverpool player named Jamie Carragher, and I probably pronounced that long, but pronounced that wrong but he was a long time liverpool player i think he holds the record for most games played for them anyway he's well known and the the host is informing him of tony khan's tweets at the beginning of this clip this is tony khan who's the director of football and son of the owner tweeting after the game i apologize to fulham supporters for our performance tonight we've looked to add center backs since wembley since the playoff he says i'm sorry we haven't yet as two got Uh, We lost a free we thought was close and had another issue with a fourth centre-back. I promised players and better efforts from this squad. He was then challenged about um, whether that meant he was now looking for his fifth choice centre-back by another fan on on Twitter, I presume. And his response, Tony Khan, was to say, either we go for the fifth choice or we wait for the one uh, one of the others to recover from. What do you make of that? Just a clown. I mean, getting involved in that. Is, is he the owner or the CEO? That's that's the director of football who's the son of the owner. I mean, he's, he's, he's trying, to, in, he's trying with to engage with fans, isn't yes. it? it? So what's, what's wrong with that? that? It, no, it never works. It always ends up in, in tears. What does Scott Parker think about that? What do those lads are playing at the back think about that? Who've maybe got to play midweek, got to play at the weekend. Just keep your mouth shut. I mean... Was he involved a couple of years ago when yes. they bought all these pl- Exactly. So he was the one who was buying players a couple of years and made a right mess of that. Shut your mouth, get on with it, keep your head down. Together, be a club, be stick together. I know people may say you talk about clubs. engaging with supporters, but that's, you shouldn't be discussing clubs' business or your transfer targets. It's nobody's. He's trying to offer crumbs of comfort, isn't he? Well, not, but fans. not after. No, well, you got beaten three nil at home. Just, just you know, take your medicine and, and, and look at things over the next few days. <laughs> like bizarre. That. I like take your medicine. I might need that clip. Take your medicine and look over things the next few days. I might need that clip. It's the same thing here. He's talking to the the fans of the team like a mark. He's apologized to them. He's telling them transactions he wants to make. It's the same behavior. Yeah, bro. But now he's getting called out on a major sports network. Bro, we live in a world right now where, like, bro, you can't – listen, man. I think there are less people today that you can bullshit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, bro. I think people today like I don't want to hear it. You know, I think shut the fuck up. I, really, I think that's the other bro. The Giants just did that. Okay, bro. Listen, Kapler cost the Giants at least five wins. So, bro, same thing. Let letter to the fans when the season. I don't want your letter to the fans. 
You made bad decisions. Shut the fuck up. You made bad decisions. I don't want to hear you. Don't bullshit me. Bro, when you fuck up, say you fuck. I fucked up. We fucked up. But, uh, Tony Collins, I'm going to blame this and I'm going to blame that. Bro, every, every company on this planet has dealt with They've, they've lost employees. They've lost players. They've lost teachers. They've lost firemen. They've lost police department. They've lost hospital workers. Do I need to go on and on and on and on? Bro, shut the fuck up. You lost. You lost, bro. Period. Yeah, but, but story. not only that, he's out there se- apologizing for right. the performance and t- talking about how he wants to get new players. Well, the coach was asked about, the coach of the team was asked about Tony's tweets, uh, and he said this. You own a football club. You can decide how you want to communicate or send a message out. It's not something I agree with. It's not helpful from the sense. But like I said, that's down to the owner and how he sees it. There's one thing that I'm disappointed with, and that's how he's actually apologizing for the performance. And that is something that I don't agree with and he shouldn't have. The performance last night was a good performance, which was a good group, which was a group of players who have done everything they can, worked tirelessly, tirelessly from the first minute to the 95th. They were down 3-0. They were still trying to work as much as they can to try and get us back in the game, and for that, I don't agree with him. I'll be the first to have an issue with my squad and my team and my players if I felt that there was something which needed to be criticized. So I have an issue with that, and obviously that's something which I don't agree with. And a a source told uh, one of the sports stations the players aren't happy at all with Tony Khan. They think he undermined the squad, and and, uh, it looks like that the players don't have the club's backing. Yeah, bro, it, it was the same. Bro, remember the press conference? Apologizing for for not enough wrestling. Oh God, bro! I'm, I'm bro. You, you, you know what's worse? I swear to God, this is what's worse. Not that they do that. That they real they don't understand how the average Joe at home reacts to that. Okay, because the average Joe at home is reacting. If you're a fan of the team, just like me, shut the fuck up. You lost. Period. End of story. You lost. They they won. You lost. I don't want to hear it. All the excuses, whatever you say, does not change the outcome of the game. You lost. Shut the fuck up. Of course, we talked about Khan putting out that tweet. They were going to beat WWE. So somebody tweets, people are for real mad that AEW's Tony Khan is up for the WWE's challenge next Friday. Did people get their feelings hurt back in the day when Bischoff challenged Vince to a fight on live TV? I think not, but maybe I'm giving us old school fans more credit than we deserve. So Tony Khan replies to this tweet. Dude, people online were absolutely furious over that in 98. Eric already had crazy online heat before that too. I'll never take it that far. I've never claimed I could physically best Vince. I just think AEW can put on a better wrestling show than them, and I want people to know it. I don't remember Bischoff getting any heat whatsoever when he made that challenge, but I wasn't. Online a- heat in 98? Yeah, I, well, exactly. I'm what? Like a- AOL homepage or yes, uh, yeah. AOL Instant Messenger? What was, where was the crazy online heat in 98? Bro, I swear to God, I read the greatest line by an AEW fan today. When I was telling you about the latest story about, you know, Raw sucked and I'm not saying we're going to beat them, you know, I went to the comment, comment section. You know what the first comment sent? The first comment said, man, Tony Khan is making it really hard to be an AEW fan. Bro, that is spot on. AEW employee by the name of Bryce Remsburg. And on March 9th, Bryce Remsburg tweets out, I'm having a me party, a party by myself at Magic Kingdom Park. And there's a shot of a dude. He's got his face cut off, but he's got an AEW shirt. And he's got the Magic Kingdom in the background. Okay, bro, no no big deal, Bryce. That's pretty cool you're at the Magic Kingdom. You want to let people know. I do that myself, bro. When I'm at certain cool places, I may take a selfie. Uh, No problem, bro. I keep the brand abreast of where I'm at. So, Cool, man. Bryce, I hope you're uh, having a good time at the Magic Kingdom. 
But, bro, remember I was talking about that guy, Fulham on the brink, the one in 15 Jaguars, the guy who owns the wrestling company that have not grown by one fan in the last 15 months. Bro, Tony Khan is answering this tweet. I'm having a me party, a party by myself in Magic Kingdom. Bro, Tony Khan is answering this tweet. A talent's tweet uh, who's hanging out at the beach. Tony says, so you're not going to be at dinner? And Bryce replies, depends if we're talking about tonight or tomorrow night. Of which Tony fires right back. I was referring to tonight. Tomorrow night, as you know, there's no true dinner. We have AEW Dynamite, and everyone eats catering on the go, and then much, much later, we all eat a catered post-show meal, not dinner per se, in our bubble hotel lounge at 2 a.m. at the earliest after dark. Bro, this is 8 o'clock in the afternoon. This poor slob, Bryce is just saying, bro, I'm chilling at the Magic Kingdom. Here's a picture, bro. Pretty cool. And Tony, at 8 o'clock at night, with Fulham on the cusp, with the Jaguars 1-15, with not drawing one more single fan since October 19th, I believe, is talking about the dinner plans. It's a picture of Tony Khan standing on the sidelines of Jacksonville's last game. Okay? Yeah. I'm going to share this with you. He's holding a notebook. Now, if you zoom in on this piece of paper that he's holding on the sidelines of a Jacksonville game, he is booking out the pay-per-view card for full gear on the sidelines of the Jacksonville Jaguars oh, game. This is my God. This is a card that says full gear. You see wrestlers' names. All the, He's holding this on the side. Bro, are we sure that's not – this is not doctored for us to – I, I compared this shot with this shot. It's exactly the same. Well, yeah, I could see here. You scribble down, and then you see like – I don't know, bro. I, I don't yep. know. Bro, you're usually the guy that you have to feel this is 1,000% accurate. Yeah, because the, you can't make it all out. You cannot make it all out. You see full gear, November 13, and then Kenny something. It scribbles. Jade, Christian versus Cole. There's a lot of scribbles. It's hard to read. But uh, I, I had a better like than than the version I got open right now. But if you if you blow it up, you, I just you can read I, I, it a just, lot more I find it fascinating. I mean, he like he's walking around with that. It's inside that that's the, the like a da- either a program or or their notes. Uh, you know their official sideline roster of the Titans, but the Titans roster it, is behind this. So he's got NFL stuff in his hands. Man, bro, he he just loves this stuff, man. He just loves it, loves it. On the sideline of the day, he's a vice president or whatever of the NFL game. Hey, he's booking wrestling. This name looks familiar. I'm not sure who he is. Darren Rovell. Anyway, he puts out a tweet, right? WWE got a big victory last night over AEW, even after SmackDown got moved to FS1. And he tweets the overall numbers of SmackDown 793 and Rampage 549. Tony Khan responds to this guy. Oh, my God, bro. Come on, man. Go ahead. Here's the... Here's the story nobody leaked to you over the weekend, but I'll give you right now, dog. AEW got a big victory over WWE after WWE aggressively extended their Friday show 30 minutes and loaded it up head to head 10 to 10 30 versus AEW Rampage with AEW Rampage winning 328,000 to 285,000 a 15% margin so those are clearly the 18 to 49 numbers combined from the two quarter hours we talked about earlier jeff jeff look at the numbers that we're talking about look at jeff repeat those numbers again 
328,285. Jeff, Jeff, for the record, okay, Jeff, I interviewed Janelle, uh, teen mom Janelle, Jeff, and got 650,000 views. You got more than that. There was more than that. Whatever. But I was close to a million. Like it was close to a million. Look at these numbers we're talking about, Jeff. Look at these numbers. Do they not understand how embarrassing this is? They they could they could declare victory all they want. Look at these numbers, bro. How is nobody in his inner circle just telling him how embarrassing this is? That you're responding to this person on the they internet. Yeah, bro. They don't care. Bro, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. I tell you this all the time. I would be the guy to point these things out to Dixie. And Dixie would get very mad at me and yell at me. Like Dix Dixie never thanked me for late pointing these things out to her, trying to protect her. I would always get the wrath of Dixie because I would tell Dixie no things nobody else will tell her. So like I I don't I don't really blame the guys if they think it's going to hurt their pocketbook or if they're going to get on Tony's wrong side. That they're not going to say nothing, bro. I just I I always say this, Jeff. For all the hate that I've accumulated and acquired over the years. Bro, could you imagine, put me in Tony Khan's shoes from day one with Vince Russo saying all this stuff. Could you like imagine, bro? You got crap for what your character said. <laughs> you know, like this guy's really saying it. Wow. And then it's just, it's like I said, bro, the, the num it, it, the, you, you're so high on beating them in a 15-minute span, you don't even realize how pitiful the numbers are that we're talking about. You, you, you shouldn't want people to know about these numbers, bro. Like, literally, you, you, you wouldn't say anything about these numbers. They're so low. This started with an AEW official Twitter account tweet. Okay. They put out a video for Adam Cole versus Orange Cassidy promotion for their Dynamite episode. And they wrote, Old Klingon proverb says revenge is a d dish best served cold. And Wednesday will be a cold night at the beach in Cleveland for Adam Cole versus Orange Cassidy. So the Star Trek reference in this AEW tweet. Right. So somebody quotes this treat. Tw treat. Somebody quotes this tweet and says, whoever wrote this tweet, AEW, thank you and live long and prosper. Tony Khan replies to this person. I wrote it. Oh my god. That's a rib. That's a rib. That's a rib. Are you sure it's the it's the correct at Tony Khan? Check mark. I wrote it. Live long and prosper to you as well. That's amazing, bro. Bro, you know what's really amazing? What's really amazing, bro, is everything this guy is involved. Okay, bro, if he was just doing AEW. But this guy with his old man is involved in so much more with the Jaguars and Fulham and all that shit. How could he possibly have the time to be tweeting out Star Trek references on the AEW account? I mean, like maybe this is all maybe, maybe he's tweaking out Star Trek references. That I don't think this guy sleeps. Man, bro, like I, I understand, like all I do is Russo's brand. I ain't wearing all these other freaking hats, bro. Well, speaking of Tony Khan, we've had many tweets where he just responds to random fans. This one sent in by the Berlin Brawler, Baron Von Lecter. This fan didn't even tag Tony Khan. Tony Khan found this tweet on his own, wasn't even tagged in it. So Fightful had put out a, an article about a Tony Khan interview where he said the pandemic showed who was putting on a better wrestling product or something like that, right? So this random person, Andrew09123, replies to Fightful. Keep in mind, Tony Khan, not tagged in this tweet at all. Andrew writes, what a effing embarrassing human being paying journalists to write articles about AEW being a competitor to WWE. Is it a coincidence in the last few weeks, the Washington Post, Variety, Business Insider, Forbes, and many more mainstream websites all say, have the same headlines? LOL. 
This guy is accusing Tony Khan of paying all these news outlets to put out this information. Mm -hmm. Tony Khan quotes this tweet. Not only does he reply to him, he quotes it, so it goes to all of his followers. You have totally busted me, Andrew09123. Clearly, I must have paid off Washington Post, Variety, Business Insider, and Forbes to talk about how AEW is a great wrestling company bringing competition to the wrestling business. Or maybe they all saw what's happening and saw a good story. It's not like he was going through his notifications and saw this in there. He had to have gone to the Fightful tweet and look at the Fightful replies to, to even find this thing. Unbelievable, man. Unreal. Well, something that hasn't been brought up in the conversation, to my recollection, is now being brought up by Tony Khan. We, we've been theorizing that this route is going to be coming in the future. This was a tweet sent in by DJ White Sox, and Khan put out a tweet. It's Friday. You know what that means. Rampage tonight on TNT. It's been a great week for AEW. Dynamite ranked number two on cable Wednesday and 1.1 million total viewers. Yep. Yep. We, we said it, bro. I mean, we said this months and months and months and months ago. And if tomorrow the demo is higher than the total viewers, then they'll, they will put the demo over the, the demo will be the most important thing that week and not the total view. Bro. These, these guys are so transparent. I mean, you, you, th these guys are not the sharpest knives in the drawer, bro. Uh, honestly, listen, I, I don't know how Tony Khan is at business. I have no idea, bro. So I can't sit here and say Tony Khan is a horrible businessman. I can't say that, but I can say you can see right, right through this guy 90% of the time, bro. And what they're doing, it's a technique that a lot of people use, whether it's in business or, or something else. When you're going to make a change and you start sprinkling things in before you go for the full blow, full blown change. Right. They're still talking about the demo, but every once in a while, here's the overall viewer yeah. that they've been saying is irrelevant this entire right. time. Right. So they're sprinkling it in and eventually it's going to yeah. take Bro, over. Here, I'll tell people what to look for right now. I'll tell you what to look for right now. Guys, I can almost guarantee you this. When the total viewership, Jeff, is under a million, it will be the demo. They will yep. never talk about total viewership under a million. I guarantee you, if they hit the million or go over, it's going to be all about the viewership. With this tweet by AEW, congratulations to AEW CEO Tony Khan. Wow. Voted Wrestling Observer Newsletter Figure 4 mm. Wrestling's 2021 best booker for the second straight year and 2021 promoter of the year third straight year tony joins vince mcmahon and giant baba is the only people to win both awards at the same time in consecutive years i just you know love what, that picture you know what's really sad about this tweet i mean seriously bro when you read this especially when you get to the end as the only people to win both awards at the same time in consecutive what does that say about the wrestling business <laughs> like seriously bro if you're talking over the last 50 years and tony khan was one of three people to win both of these awards at the same time to you what are you saying about the wrestling business bro wow, wow. how about that picture though that that picture is great Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, Superman's got the hands on the hips, the whole nine yards, ready to fly away, bro. Throw Lois on his back. We had that tweet a few weeks back where he talked about that he put that one tweet out from the AEW account. What are the what are the odds that he put this tweet out himself? 50-50. This was sent in by Mohamed Ture. This was an Instagram post by Tony Khan. Oh, I saw this picture, bro. <laughs> so for those on audio, it's a picture of him. Hugging Sting, it kind of looks like, you know when you see those pictures from Disney World of the little girls hugging the princesses, like Snow White and stuff? like that. that I mean, he looks like a little kid at, a, at an amusement park hu hugging somebody in a costume. It says, happy birthday to the icon Stinger. I'm so glad he came to AEW. He's an amazing person. I'm blessed to call him a friend. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, bro, listen, I, I was extremely, extremely uh tight with Sting in the time I worked with him at TNA. There, there, there was never this kind of an embrace ever. And I, I'm I'm just telling you, bro, th this guy is making such a huge and massive mistake 
of being everybody's friend, bro. And he's letting them know that. He's letting them know we're friends and we're good friends and I value the friendship. And, bro, if you don't think wrestlers aren't going to be taking advantage of that, bro, this guy, I'm just telling you, bro, he has no idea how to play the game. But at the end of the day, man, it doesn't matter because of the endless funds that this guy has. It doesn't matter. I mean, bro, I am telling you, money means absolutely nothing to this guy. Absolutely nothing. So if I'm friends with them and I'm buddies with them and, you know, Sting knows we're buddies and Taz knows we're buddies and Tony and you name it. I'm going to give them whatever they want. Why, bro? Because I can, because I have it. Like I said, bro, I've said this a million times before. I would love to see the books. Uh, What is that payroll, bro? That is what I would really love to see. And you know what, bro? Meltzer can have access to that. Meltzer can see that. But that is something that is never spoken about every day, bro. I see this guy signing new talent. And, bro, people I never heard of, Jeff. People I have no idea who they are. And that bottom line keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. But we never hear about – we we know payroll in sports. We know what people are getting in sports. We know what every team's payroll is. We know that. I would love to know where they started – and what it is now, because I am telling you, bro, it it has at least quadrupled. Have they quadrupled income? That's what I want to know. Let's go to this Tony Khan tweet. This was sent in by Scott Ward. Now, first Khan put out a tweet promoting Dynamite April 13th, and he, he put over the Minoru Suzuki match versus Samoa Joe. So he put out a promotional tweet for that and he replies to his own tweet on on this match and he says i really wasn't messing around today (laughs) because he booked that match bro (laughs) oh bro come on they get the the uh the bit the marks have made it to the ring the marks have made it to the office the marks have made it in charge like unreal man just unreal this past saturday and sunday was wrestlemania and on saturday There was some weather issues as the show was outdoors in Tampa, and there was a torrential downpour. As Vince McMahon and the WWE scrambled as to what to do, hoping the rain would stop on Twitter, TK, Tony Khan, one take Tony, better call Khan, put out this tweet. To save the day. Now, this is the actual TK tweet. I cannot make this shit up, folks. On Wednesday, November 11th, sideways rain was blowing in. Our elevated ring wasn't affected, but I, 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 I felt the ringside mats were slippery and unsafe 10 minutes to show time i i i i had a light bulb idea to lay down carpet at ringside and remembered we had a red carpet it totally solved the problem the crew chopped up the red carpet and was still laying it down at 802 p.m as the live show started The first match was Brian Cage versus Matt Seidel. I, I, I asked Taz to go out and do an opening promo and stretch so we could shoot him close up while the crew was putting the carpet down. Genius, TK. That's my two cents, the genius. Also, I'm not trolling anyone. I, 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 I. Just think it's a safe approach that I, 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 I thought would be worth mentioning. It occurred to me, 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 
last minute too. And it would have tremendously affected the matches that night if I, 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 I hadn't done it. And it potentially prevented some injuries from occurring. Let me repeat that last sentence. It is very important. It would have tremendously affected the matches that night if I, I, I hadn't done it. Plus, it potentially prevented some injuries from occurring. Tony Khan, what can I say? God bless you. Thank you, 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 you for preventing any injuries that could have come from the rain. Tony, this is why we love you. This is Vince Russo for WMARK. Tony Khan puts out this tweet. An independent study has confirmed that much of the staunch anti-AEW online community aren't real individuals. It's a staff running thousands of accounts and an army of bots to signal boost them. Look closely. These aren't real people. Who'd pay for such a wildly expensive thing? Who'd pay for a study of that? First thing is, bro, he's putting a spotlight on it. So he's putting a spotlight yes. on all the AEW negative. He's letting people know, in case you didn't know, there's a lot of AEW hate out there, but just so you know, the AEW hate is fabricated. That's what he said. And not, who knows if that's true or not? It may be true. I, I don't freaking know. I Honestly, I would find it hard to believe that somebody sitting around all day doing thousands of Twitter accounts just to hate on AEW. That person really needs to find something else to do with their life. Yes. But at the same time, would Tony Khan make that up? I could see him actually paying people to do a study on this right. because what he's showing here, and it's Eric Bischoff said this throughout the week, and I think it was based on this tweet, but this is something you've been saying for I don't know how long. He cannot take any criticism of no, AEW. None. He can't. So he has to point out. These people aren't real. He has to let everybody know instead of just saying who gives a shit. They're talking about me, right? They're helping the algorithm. If these people are fake bots, it's more people talking about AEW, which pushes it up and gets it into more conversations. Take that as a win, Tony. These people are spending money, and they're actually helping you in the long run. Right. He continues. Research this one yourselves. You're, you internet detectives thrive in these situations. How, how are we going to research that? You going to give us the study, Tony? <laughs> How can I read? But anyway, so then he says, speaking of wild things, so he puts over, you don't want to miss, miss John Moxley versus Wheeler Yuta on Rampage. And then he replies again, talking about the bots. Their boiler room staff is going to be working overtime on a Friday, and I love it. Well, if you loved it, you wouldn't put the first tweet out in the first place, <laughs> right? Oh, my God. Bro, pe people just freaking expose them. They, they can't think. They can't think things through. They're so excited to, to blast these things out. And then once they're out there, you contradicted yourself six times, but you were so excited to get this out that you didn't even read it over. Yeah, but he wasn't done. He put out one more. Ever wonder why so much of the activity of these accounts is retweets and replies? Like who actually has 80% of their activity as straight up retweets? I've seen people that I know are real that really don't tweet much, but they retweet a lot of things. Oh, I, I mean, that's a not a lot of that, bro. Yeah, that's not odd to me. No, nah, bro. I, I was I was trying to clean up some of my uh, Twitter uh, people that just haven't been active. I saw a ton of that where they would not tweet, but they would definitely, you know, retweet. I, I saw a lot of that, bro. He's probably telling the truth because I could see him. Spending the money to do a study. Now, if you're going to come out like this, you should show the results. Right. You know how many people think he's making this up? Right. I honestly, if I had to bet, I would say that he did actually pay somebody to research this because he's so obsessed with. Unbelievable, bro. It's, the the it's, hate. It's, but it's, it's sad to a point, man. It's like freaking sad, man. This tweet sent in by the Berlin Brawler, Baron Von Lecter, Kevin Lamar, and Greg O'Grady. So this was in a thread about the booking decision at the end of one of the shows. So one guy tweets, Tony, that's why you need to hire a booker that's done this before. Oh, okay. Boy. 
You know, it's funny, bro, because I was reading a story about Khan today and he did it again. I, I guess they did a spot with that big Indian guy and they did I a lot. I think that was the one. I think that's the one they're arguing about. Here okay, yeah, yeah. So, so everybody knows he did a lights on and lights off, went over like a fart in church <laughs> and, and, and he made sure, TK made sure he pointed out that was not his idea, bro. Actually, it was the idea of a 30 year veteran. But but again, yeah, that's bro, yeah, that, yeah, that is what started yeah. this thread. Yeah, that's yeah. what started this thread. Like, so like I swear to God, anytime they shit on something, not my not my idea, bro. Not my idea. So the guy says that's why you need to hire a booker that's done this before. Right. So Tony Khan replies to this tweet. You need to hire this ratio. Now, for anybody that doesn't use Twitter and doesn't understand what that means. I do not understand what that means, Jeff. A ratio is when you say something and you get way more replies than likes, which means people are most likely disagreeing with you because you said something stupid. So if I say something like Hulk Hogan is the least popular wrestler of all time, I'm probably going to get. 75 people replying, telling me what an idiot I am, and maybe one or two likes. That's a ratio when when your replies are way higher than the <laughs> likes. So he's trying to speak like cool Twitter talk. You need to hire this ratio. Like, like boom, mic drop. You know, like, th- that's what this guy, this is what this guy does with his day. Uh, oh, man, bro. Too much. Oh God. I, I would love to see a I would love to see like a um TV show with somebody playing the Tony Khan character. This is Tony Khan oh, God, at the yeah. N- at the NFL draft. Unbelievable, bro. Bro, is his father thinking anything? Sh- I think his name is Shad, Shad Khan or something. Is he thinking anything like at this point? You you know what everybody else in the room is thinking. You 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 know what they're thinking. But what is he thinking? Like, does he, does he, does he know? Would you know if your son was a total goof? Is it like, I think if Will or VJ were total goofs, I think I'd know it. Do do you think he knows his son's a total goof? Probably, but he probably doesn't care. He probably loves his son and doesn't care what anybody else thinks. And, you know, so many people were tweeting. It's it looks it looks like bring your kid to work day. It absolutely yeah. does, bro. It, it 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 absolutely does. It looks like that episode of The Office where everybody brought their kids to work. Absolutely does, bro. Unreal. <laughs> Got Unreal. That Jags that Jags thing on that he the wears. Jags thing that he's wore a million times. It must stink to high heaven. And then I I just, bro, I'm sorry. I'll never get over that hair. I I just, because bro, every time I look at that hair, bro, you got to, you got to understand the humidity in Florida. You've got to understand having that kind of a hairdo (laughs) in that Florida humidity. Oh my God, bro. Like, Ah, oh, but yeah, bring uh, bring your uh, bring your kid to work day. Yes, does he not have the respect, or he doesn't think he has to? Like, you look at everybody else in that room, his father included, dressed, yeah. you know, bro, business, bro, and, and, and he's not. Bro, I will make the perfect comparison t- for you. Okay, Shane McMahon would never do this in a million years. Shane, Bo, you know, listen, you know, bro, listen, I, I've, I've got some issues with Stephanie. I don't have any issues with Shane, but I will say this. Both of them carry themselves like they're McMahons. Like you, you, bro, if you don't know Shane from Adam, if you see Shane out, you know Shane somebody. If you see Stephanie out dressed up at some type of function, you know she's somebody. Uh, I've got to I've got to say that, bro. Presentation the McMahons do Vince proud. They they would never ever do this, bro. Ever. I don't know, bro. I, bro, listen. You know, again, a lot of times we we have the issue of we don't know what having that kind of money means. Yeah. So having that kind of money could mean, bro, you don't have a care in the world. You don't care what anybody else thinks. You don't care. We'll never know that, bro. We'll never have that kind of money. I remember Aub- Aubrey Huff told me once, you know, he's got, he told me flat out, he goes, I, he says, I have FU money, 
which means he could do whatever he wants and say whatever he wants. And, you know, it doesn't matter, bro. These guys got a million times F you money. So I, I, I don't know, bro. It's, it, it's really hard to understand. All right. This, this Tony Khan tweet, th- this could have been scary for us. I had no idea that this was even a thing until Nathan Vaughn sent in this tweet. So apparently they were going to ban the recording of the post show media scrums. So Khan puts this tweet out. I've seen that some of the wrestling media are upset with our policy that they can't record the post pay-per-view scrum on site at double or nothing. No problem. We'll change it. You can record. This could have been a disaster for us. Oh my God. We need this video. What what do you you mean? You you can't take this scrum away to hug in and, (laughs) Oh my God, bro! I would have had uh, I would have had uh, scrum withdrawal, bro. Absolutely not. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. What I don't understand is why did they ban it to begin with? And then when everybody complained, which if you're when you ban this, you should know that they're going to complain because they get so many YouTube views. Uh, it's a big deal for these sites. You know they're going to complain if you ban it. So then you instantly unban it when they complain when you should have known that. Well, why did you ban it in the first place? Like, because I don't of, understand. Because it. of us. Because of us. Probably. Probably. <laughs> I of mean, all that's, the videos that's of the exactly hugs. Right, bro. We had a montage of him burying and nestling his head in restless bosoms, bro. Would you want that out there for everybody to see? Now he had put out his typical, you know, advertising plug to watch Dynamite. It's Wednesday. You know what that means. AW live on TBS, 8 p.m puts the the card out there so some random person replies all eight hundred thousand people can't wait (laughs) (laughs) Uh, here we go here we go of course tony khan replies to this person and says that would still be 799,942 more people than the 58 who care about anything you do or say because the guy has 58 followers on my, my my question is this did tony khan actually have to use a calculator to subtract 58 from 800,000 or you do you think he was able to do that off the top of his head He's seriously comparing a national television show's audience bro. to the followers of that's a random person of on Twitter. That's the beauty. That's the magic of Tony Khan, Jeff. That's the that's why we all gather here, uh, you and I, on Wednesday night to record. So don't knock it. Don't knock it. That's the magistry of Tony Khan, bro. Br- that's the brilliance of Tony Khan. All right, let's go to these Tony Khan tweets. These are sent in by Greg O'Grady, Raphael Moreno. Andy and Paul Nair. So Tony puts out these tweets yesterday. One of my favorite days, including great visits with fans and media, a trip to LA for the most fulfilling meeting of my life with Warner brothers, discovery leadership dinner with my dad and Dana white, where I got to break the news to Dana about money in the bank, moving to MGM. And then he puts in a second tweet, Genius move trying to take on Dana in the UFC in Vegas during International Fight Week. Blatant cheap shot at WWE here while bragging that he's at dinner with Dana White and breaking the news to him that they had to move venues. What a freaking mark. I mean, seriously. What Bro, a first of all, I covered mark. this with, I think I covered this with uh, Chris. Bro, I have zero problem in the world with the WWE shooting for the stars and booking that big stadium. They they believed they could fill that big stadium. I got no problem with that, bro. Go for it. You think you could do it? You think you got the resources? Freaking go for it. So the fact that they didn't sell the tickets and had to go to a smaller venue, I'm not going to sit here and cut promos on them because that that's the right attitude, man. Shoot for the stars. If you think you could fill out that stadium, book the freaking stadium. What do you? I have no no issue whatsoever with them doing that. So Vince McMahon tweets on Friday that he was retiring 22 minutes after he puts out this tweet tony khan tweets 
Thanks to you wrestling fans and your great support of AEW, I'm grateful to now be the longest tenured CEO in pro wrestling. Yeah. He, you know, bro, and again, like, bro, this, this happens so many times in wrestling where they try to be funny and it just, it, it falls way short. Th- that's all he was trying to do there, bro. He was trying to be funny there. He thought of it. He thought he was, it was witty. So he posted it out there right away. And of course, you know, then, then, then here comes the headline. Tony Khan explains his, oh my God, bro. Give me a break, man. Give me, he, he just thought it was funny. It's a Tony Khan tweet that was sent in by Scott Warden, David W. Turner. Well, this started off with a Cody Rhodes tweet. A- asking who should step up to be- challenge him for his title. So CM Punk replied to Cody with a bunch of names, Sign Guy, Dudley, Domino, Fearless Jack Bull, Dean Visk, and New Jack. So Tony Khan replies to CM Punk. Duly noted. Fun facts. I saw you on a house show in Champaign on Super Bowl Sunday 13 and a half years ago with Domino and Cherry. Also, New Jack was really nice to me when I was a 13-year-old kid visiting Philadelphia. My dad loved New Jack. Wow. You know what the best part about this is, though? Punk, no sold it. No reply. <laughs> like. No, so he's probably reading this going, you effing Mark. Bro, you know what I was thinking about today? Bro, could you imagine if owners of professional sports team carried themselves this way? Bro, Jerry Jones carrying himself. Bro, could you imagine? Bro, Vince McMahon carrying himself this way. Like any bro, Mark Cuban. Like, can you like imagine any professional owner of any sports or entertainment? The 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 head of Sony. Can you imagine I mean, that, that that that's a fanboy tweet? Bro, you ain't seen nothing yet. This is my submission. I do not know if this could ever be topped by the, some of the greats, by Meltzer, by Keller, by Alvarez, by Mitchell. I'm going to read the tweet. As we just informed Swole World on AEW Dynamite via formal letter, Big Swole, bro, keep in mind, keep in mind, bro, Big Swole, like they're, (laughs) bro, Big Swole just got a formal letter. So, bro, a character going by the name of Big Swole just got a formal letter. Bro, this is the equivalent of a professional ball player being suspended. But in this case, it's Big Swole. It's like it's not even the legit name. It's not yeah, it'd be even like the, the Bulls, like Dear Air Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Man, bro, mail the mailman has been suspended. <laughs> as, as we just informed at Swole World on AEW Dynamite via formal letter, Big Swole, the mailman, has been suspended from AEW for kidnapping. Dr. Britt Baker. Bro, this, this one, two, three, four, five. Bro, I am contemplating getting these next five words literally put on my tombstone. Because, Jeff, I don't think you could ever find any five words to string together that would be more entertaining from these next five words. This is holy shit. This is a holy shit line. I'm going to go back to the beginning. 
in case somebody missed something. As we just informed that Swole World on AEW Dynamite via formal letter, Big Swole has been suspended from AEW for kidnapping Dr. Britt Baker. Jeff, are you ready? I'm ready. Wrestlers can't kidnap each other. (laughs) (laughs) Bro, wrestlers cannot kidnap each other. Bro, I, I have seen a lot in my life. Those five words together in a sentence are the greatest five words I've ever read in my life. We ask Swole, Swole, bro. We ask Swole to go home to cool off. Swole. From a kidnapping. From a, yeah. from a felony. Go home and cool, cool off. off. Swole's an important member of our team, and we'll see her back soon. Mr. Tony Khan. Bro, I'm not even going to hit my Sebastian Maniscalco. Aren't you embarrassed? Bro, this is beyond. This is beyond embarrassing. Bro, this tweet, if you weren't before, this tweet has just made you the joke of the industry. And now, bro, every wrestler is laughing at you. Every wrestler knows you are a joke. Nobody, nobody will ever take you seriously again. Bro, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say right now on the record, this is worse than anything Dixie Carter ever did. Ever did on her worst day. This is worse than any of that. You want to talk about... Having no credibility. Kidnap each other. Yeah. You want to talk about having no credibility credibility, just being a total ass clown and just a total moron and a total idiot and a total imbecile and a total child. Bro, like holy shit. I I I I can't believe the level of stupidity in this man's brain. I, I, I can't believe it, bro. 505 people are tweeting about it. I'd love to see what they're saying, bro. Well, I just found it. A fan said, Lance Archer kidnaps someone every week. And he replied, Lance Archer assaults people and then throws them at or around the ring. That's different. This is wrestling. You have to draw the line somewhere, but assault isn't it. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. This is a rib on us. Like, this is such a rib on us, bro. I swear to God. I- I'm waiting for Ashton Kusher to come out with the freaking camera. This is a rib. There is no way you tweet that, and now you're going to start arguing with freaking fans that are just blatantly blatantly showing you what a freaking idiot you are, and now you're going to go back and forth and try to defend this rather than delete it? Bro, freaking delete it. Delete it. Say you never put it out there. Delete it. Say someone hacked your account. Bro, say someone hacked my account to make me look like an idiot. Delete the freaking thing, bro. Oh, my God, bro. Dixie never, never did something that stupid. Ever, ever. Some Somebody's got to put a stop to this. Somebody replied with a gif of somebody saying, nah, homie, nah, like, nah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That, bro, we'll never get a better clip than that. We won't. I, I mean, it's impossible. It, it's just impossible. Impossible. 